When somebody leaves Strange Weather, a big part of what we want them to be thinking about is that they haven't just been to an exhibition about climate change that was preaching at them and telling them the things in their lives that they have to change immediately. What we hope is that they feel that they've engaged in a conversation about the different ways that as humans we can adapt and mitigate to climate change, but also that there's some difficult choices to make and that there's actually an opportunity to really engage in discussions around those choices without them becoming cul-de-sacs of kind of negative ideas. This show has definitely given a more playful approach to it. It's more about accepting it and kind of like finding new ways to deal with it and not just being like, oh, this is bad and we have to just deal with it this way. When all the rest of you are dying in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, I'm going to be living a life of luxury in my own survivable. I don't know, what's survival like if it's, if it's in one of those? <laughs> This is not a do-gooder show that you need to save the planet by using less electricity or even save the polar bears. It's more about what will strange weather and climate change do to me in my life. We experience as individuals in really small time frames, but we have this sort of understanding that it's global and that it's something that goes over centuries or decades where on an individual time scale it's hard to relate to what that means. We know that human culture is adapting to strange weather, but should we maybe adapt weather to fit our strange culture? The idea of humans trying to control the weather, this has been an ongoing conversation since the dawn of human culture, I would say. When we were putting this exhibition together, what we realized was people really can't get enough of the weather. People talk about the weather all the time to, to friends, to strangers. It's something that we all experience, and it's a very sort of uh, common denominator. People that are coming along to Strange Weather are going to get an opportunity to do their very own weather forecast at our green screen. Uh, they're going to get a chance to bet against the weather in terms of what it's going, what's going to be happening in eight days' time. No, I did the forecast for the future, so it's like the, it's like the Hunger Games, so to speak. So yeah, it's great fun. It's forecasting. I think it's in five decades' time. It's your own personalised forecast. It's fantastic. The graphics are amazing. Cloud takes the last ten years of the Irish housing market and visualizes it through a series of house-shaped clouds. What I like about it is it puts together the, the imagination of the artist with the rigor of the science and develops whole new perspectives and different ways of telling the story about our weather. The cloud droplets actually condense on the wings of the collector and sort of flow into the sample container. The cloud samples are ingested by my human subject. I don't know if drinking a cloud makes me feel any different, but I have been thinking about clouds since I drank it and noticing them more and thinking about songs of clouds in them. I like the idea that I'm actually 4% human, 1% cloud and 95% unknown. Maybe the cloud will grow into the unknown. The wee bit downstairs about the festivals that might not exist if the weather changes and it kind of actually makes you think that it could in our lifetime change, change the way we do things and the time of year things happen and it, it's real, yeah, it is, it is a bit thoughtful working here. There's definitely a topic that needs a lot more research. I think this show sort of starts to really unpack that space.